Welcome, welcome, welcome to this channel, Baruch Haba Bashem Yahua. And um, today we do part 11 of the in depth study known as Changed into His Likeness. And the title is called The New Life in Dwelling. <clears throat> and this is part three of the life story that um, uh, through which Yahuwah, better said, uh, taught us through Yitzhak. So the life story of Yitzhak is a teaching for us, but we do not see this. And we do not understand actually all the life stories from all the uh, the peoples in uh, and especially some uh, prominent people in uh, Yahuwah's word. The new life indwelling. It is only through knowing Yahuwah first as the Yahuwah of Yitzhak or Isaac that we can move on to know him as the Yahuwah of Jacob or Yaqub or Yaakob. Unless we know our inheritance as something already secured and settled in Mashiach and given to us by Yahuwah the Most High, we have no foundation for going on to be brought under the discipline of the Ruach or spirit without first knowing that assurance of a work of Yahuwah already done in Mashiach would be terrible thing would be a terrible thing at the risk of laboring the point let me say again all that Mashiach Yahusha has done and all that we have in him is already ours. As children of the Most High Yahuwah, we are already in Mashiach. We are one with him. And Mashiach Yahusha is actually Yahuwah. So we are one with Yahuwah. We don't hope to be it is already done the only question is do we really believe Yahuwah's word when we read it we have been crucified and buried and raised and seated together with Mashiach if his death is past so is ours no man can say that Mashiach's death is future then how can ours be Ours is 100% as complete and finished as his, not for 99% or something, no. Not all the sin and weakness in the world can alter that fact. Sin is another question entirely. Before we see this, we long to die in order to escape from sinning. When, however, we see that we have already died in Mashiach, our outlook on both sin and death is completely changed. It is not prayerful people, but praising ones who reach the way of holiness. Those who see and who seeing believe and who believing praise. Many of us read Romans 6, verse 11. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to Yahuwah, the Most High, in Mashiach Yahusha, our Master. Oh, we exclaim, I have tried that. I have tried to reckon myself dead to sin, but I always find I have sinned before, I have had time to get the reckoning done. But what is reckoning? Here is a $5 bill in my wallet. 
I reckon I have five dollars. For the simple reason that I have it here. What use would be reckoning if I didn't have it? Reckoning means bookkeeping, keeping accounts. And common sense tells us that accounts must bear a direct relation to the cash in the till. Yahuwah commands us to reckon ourselves dead because we are dead and for no other reason. Our old man was crucified with him. And we know this. Romans 6 verse 6. Therefore we are told to count upon it. The fact of the death comes before our reckoning on it, not the other way around. That is the difference between victory and defeat. The money is in my wallet, whether I reckon it is there or not. And I am dead with Mashiach Yahusha, whether I reckon upon the fact or not. On the stake or at the stake of Mashiach, Yahuwah included me in him. <clears throat> And so I have been crucified. Let me repeat that. It is not that I identify myself with Mashiach. It is that Yahuwah has included me in him. He has already done it. This is something that can come to us with a flash of new understanding. Just as once Yahuwah opened our eyes to see our sins laid upon Mashiach. So again he must open our eyes to see our own selves in Mashiach. Yahusha. And this is something he delights to do. Suddenly we see with a flash of insight that all that Mashiach Yahusha has already done has become ours. This union with Mashiach Yahusha is in death disposes of our whole unhappy past. But this negative value to us of the finished work of Mashiach at the stake in respect of the old way of life is matched by a positive value to us of his living person in respect of the new. So Yahuwah comes with this further revelation to my heart that Mashiach is in me. Mashiach is my life, fighting for me, triumphing on my behalf doing what he wants to do in me and knowing that Yahusha Mashiach is actually a representation of Yahuwah so Yahuwah is doing the things through us and he's doing what he wants to do through us and doing it now it is not that I have strength through him to seek humility meekness and holiness he is all that in me, for he is my life. The believer has not a lot of odds and ends of virtues. Indeed, <clears throat> he has no virtues. He just has Mashiach Yahusha, or better said, Yahuwah. The question is again, do we believe Yahuwah's word? Do we believe 1 Corinthians 1.30? Oh yes, we know we should have victory. So when we meet with a temptation, we take great care and we watch and we pray we feel it is our duty to fight against that thing to reject it so we make up our minds not to yield exerting our wills to the utmost but that is not our victory mashiach is our victory we do not need willpower 
and determination to resist the tempter. We look to him who is our life. Master, this is your affair. I count on you. So this means we have to ask in different ways the things. That is the biggest teaching in the last few days I received. That we are asking the things in an incorrect way. And the victory is yours and you, um, and you, not I, shall have the credit. So often we gain a kind of victory and everyone knows about it. We achieved it ourselves. So that's another lesson here, another thing we need to stop doing. Thinking that the victories are ours and share it with the whole world. Sometimes you better can have uh, your mouth shut and keep it between you and the Most High Yahuwah. But communion with our Most High Yahuwah is broken and there is no peace. Many of us live in constant fear of temptation. We know just how much we can stand, but alas, we have not discovered how much Mashiach can stand. I can stand temptation upon to a point, but beyond that point I am done for. If two children cry, the mother can stand it, but if more than two cry together, under she goes. Yet it is not really a matter of whether two children cry or three. It is all a question of whether I am getting the victory or Mashiach, Yahusha. <clears throat> if it is, I then, I can stand to only. If Mashiach, it won't matter if 20 cry at once. To be carried through by Mashiach is to be left wondering afterward how it happened. This too is a matter that Yahuwah delights to bring to us with a new flash of understanding. Suddenly one day we see that Mashiach is our life. Colossians 3 verse 4 That day everything is changed. There is a day when we see ourselves in Mashiach. After that, nothing can make us see ourselves outside of him. Yeah, well, I would say it is actually that we are going to see that everything is in Yahuwah and that there is nothing outside Yahuwah. It alters everything. Then also there is a day when we see that Mashiach within us is our life. There is no ours in the whole case. People should realize that there is no I and there is no ours. There is nothing. We are just simply mess vessels. That's it. Vessels with the name. Because everything is all about Yahuwah's will and um, fulfilling his will and therefore he needs some vessels because um, he needs some vessels here on earth to accomplish his will. So eventually it is not our life. Nothing is ours. There is no I. There is no me. There is only the most high that works through us. So, it is that we see and realize that the life that we live comes from Yahuwah the Most High, not from us. That too alters our whole outlook. 
They may be different days with an interval between, or both may come together. But we must have both, and when we do, then we begin to know the fullness of Mashiach, better said, the fullness of Yahuwah. Because Yahusha Mashiach is nothing more than a representation of Yahuwah himself. And to marvel that we have been so stupid hit here too, as to remain poor in Yahuwah's storehouse. Ours is the Yahuwah of Yitzhak. We are entering into Yahuwah's inheritance. It is now that we can begin to look at the difference between the Yahuwah of Yitzhak and the Yahuwah of Yaqub. Yitzhak or Isaac, as we have said, speaks to us of Yahuwah's importation to us of Mashiach. Whereas Jacob illustrates our disciplinary schooling by the Ruach HaKadash. Yitzhak reminds us of Yahuwah's gifts made over to us absolutely. A reminder that gives us wonderful confidence and assurance. Ya uh, Yaqub, or Yaakob, on the other hand, draws our attention to the Spirit's inward working upon us to form Mashiach within, better said, to form us and to mold us in a way that Yahuwah wants to see us and in a way how we become fit for doing Yahuwah's work, better said, fit enough so Yahuwah can use us. A working whose costliness draws forth rather our fear and trembling, Yitzhak is able to witness to victory in Mashiach. Jacob uses us to know our own extreme weaknesses and uselessness. In Yitzhak we boldly proclaim that sin is beneath our feet, yet in Jacob we tremblingly tremblingly confess that as long as we live we may fall again. Yitzhak assures us that Mashiach's fullness is ours and so the fullness of Yahuwah is ours because Yahuwah is in us so that we may confidently praise him the Most High. Jacob recalls our attention from Mashiach to the believer, to our deficient and inadequate selves. The contrasts we have abduced above represents two experiences that run parallel throughout Scripture and are integral to our life as a believer. Yeah, the trouble is that we are apt to give our attention to one of the two only. There are, on the one hand, some very strong, almost extreme words in Scripture. Yahuwah always leads us in triumph. Sin shall not have dominion over you. To me... To live, to me to live is Mashiach. I can do all things through Mashiach and know that again 
Yahusha HaMashiach is reflecting Yahuwah himself in us. They are bold, strong, almost boastful affirmations. Yet the same people who say these things must also say, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. I am chief of sinners. Note there the present tense in the Greek. We have no hope in ourselves. The blood of Yahusha, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. We also are weak in him. When I am weak, then I am strong. Wait a minute. When I am weak, then am I strong. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my weaknesses. So we see another kind of believer, utterly weak, sinful, trembling. We see another kind of, of um, a life of a believer, altogether, altogether lacking in self-confidence. These two together, Yitzhak, with his confidence in Mashiach, so that was the whole life story of Yitzhak. Yitzhak was a, also um, an example to us what the type of life would be that Yahuwah wants us to live. Because Yitzhak did nothing. He didn't do anything by himself. Everything was ordered and he just followed and obeyed the orders that came from the Most High Yahuwah. And then he was also mirroring, reflecting to us what it is when Mashiach, Yahusha, Yahuwah is in us. And if he is in us, then we are going to live a life as he wants us to live because he is the one that lives life. It's actually not us. Because Yahuwah works through us, but it looks like as if we do it. But he is the doer in our life, not us. We're just a vessel that's it. We're a vessel. Yahuwah is doing the life. That is why he says, your steps must be ordered by me, Yahuwah. And Jacob, with his self-knowledge, are the life of the believer. It is because we only see one side of this that there are so many divergencies among those who preach the victorious life. We must know Mashiach's fullness, but we must also know our own corruption. And boy, oh boy, do we truly want to face our own corruption on daily basis? Because we do corruption on daily basis. And we, most of the time, well, you can say at least <laughs> all the time, we are completely unaware of the corruption we do on daily basis let alone the corruption that we have done in our whole life. 
and that has been passed on to us from generation unto generation. These are things we must see and these are what the Most High Yahuwah of Yaakov or Jacob shows us through the schooling of the Spirit, the Ruach, until we reach the place where we really know ourselves. Better said, where we have the guts to see the ugliness in ourselves. Because that's what it's saying here. To see ourselves means to see the deep ugliness, also the hidden ugliness in ourselves. And I can assure you that each one of us has a type of ugliness that we are still running away from. In too many of us, there is a de departmental knowledge of Yahuwah, the Most High. We know the fatherhood of Yahuwah, but not the positiveness of Mashiach. Or we know this too, but lack the brokenness of the Spirit. And that's exactly what is going on. Many believers, the Spirit in many believers are not broken yet. <clears throat> not in a way as we read in all the uh, scriptures, not only the 66 books, but also the apocryphal books. Because do not let yourselves being fooled by those who say that you are not allowed to read the apocryphal books because in these apocryphal books are hidden gems but you need to read them with the Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit and ask to help you to find these hidden gems there's a lot of valuable information in these books still it's not without a reason that they have been taken aside. So it's because you are not allowed to know something. And there are many people, false shepherds, and they are rising with the day that tell others not to read the apocryphal books because they're highly authorized and this and that and to stay stuck with the 66 books. Um, I want to say that the 66 books are far more often authorized than the apocryphal books are. So you need the apocryphal books to get a deeper and broader understanding of what is being told in the 66 books. Some know the, the Most High Yahuwah of uh, Jacob or Yaakob or Yaqub without knowing the Most High Yahuwah of Yitzhak or Isaac. They see their own weakness but do not know Mashiach's strength. No wonder they feel des uh, they feel depressed about it. So they see. Um, so without knowing the Yahuwah of Yitzhak, they see their own weakness, but do not know Mashiach's strength. No wonder they feel depressed about it. If we want a full knowledge of the Most High Yahuwah, we must know Him in all of these three ways. And even then, we shall find that we are constantly making further progress. Wow! This is uh, quite a teaching, and the next time, that is uh, <clears throat> the third part of this book actually and so the part 12 
that goes all about um, the life story of Jacob and what Yahuwah tried to teach us and learn us and wanted to show us through Jacob. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this teaching message, Words of Wisdom. And uh, please watch all the other in-depth study series. Share them and uh, listen, listen to them as uh, often as possible. Um, I wish you all a Baruch day. And uh, do not forget to praise the Most High Yahuwah and all the things you do and say. And um, Baruch Abba, Bashem Yahuwah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. See you next time.